Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Harmonic Distortion Measurements. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to harmonic distortion measurements in radio frequency applications. Harmonic distortion measurements in the radio frequency domain are normally performed using a spectrum analyzer. So this presentation assumes a basic familiarity with spectrum analyzers and their operation. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation before continuing with this presentation. Let's start with an overview of harmonics. Harmonics are copies of signals that appear at integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. These are usually created by so-called nonlinear devices, such as amplifiers. For example, when a signal at 100 MHz passes through a nonlinear device, the output contains not only the original signal, but it also contains harmonics of that signal at 200 MHz, 300 MHz, 400 MHz, 500 MHz, etc. Although the fundamental is not often called the first harmonic, harmonics are normally referenced by their order, that is, second harmonic, third harmonic, etc. As you may have noticed from the previous slide, the amplitude or level of a harmonic decreases as the harmonic order increases. In other words, the second harmonic has lower amplitude than the fundamental, the third harmonic is lower than the second harmonic, etc. Theoretically, there can be an infinite number of harmonics, but at some point the harmonics become so small that they can be safely ignored, since they fall below the noise floor. There are a few cases where harmonics can be useful or desirable. For example, harmonic mixers can be used to intentionally generate harmonics, which are then used to downconvert microwave or millimeter wave signals to a lower intermediate frequency. However, in the vast majority of cases, harmonics are undesirable and should be kept as low as possible. Low pass filtering is the most common way in which harmonics are suppressed or attenuated. Because harmonics are undesirable, it's important to measure the levels or amplitudes of both the individual harmonics as well as the sum of all harmonics, and these types of measurements are called harmonic distortion measurements. In radio frequency applications, harmonic distortion is normally measured using a spectrum analyzer. The DUT, or device under test, here an oscillator, is connected to the analyzer and the analyzer then uses something called zero span mode to measure the power of the fundamental and of each harmonic individually. We'll talk about this in much more detail on the next slide. The analyzer itself should have high linearity to avoid harmonics being generated within the analyzer. And the analyzer should also have low noise in a high dynamic range since the difference in amplitude between the fundamental and the highest order harmonic of interest can be quite large. Some types of DUT, such as an amplifier, require an input, and signal generators are therefore sometimes needed to provide this input signal. Like spectrum analyzers, a signal generator used in making harmonic distortion measurements needs to have good performance, and in particular, low output harmonics. In some cases, it may be necessary or advantageous to use an external low pass filter to further reduce any harmonics present in the generator output. As mentioned a moment ago, the power in the fundamental and the power in the harmonics can be measured individually using the zero span mode of a spectrum analyzer. Zero span means that instead of sweeping across a frequency range, the spectrum analyzer measures at a single fixed frequency, usually starting at the fundamental and then at each calculated harmonic frequency. At each of these frequencies, power is measured only within a user-definable resolution bandwidth, which is normally chosen so that it's only slightly wider than the harmonic. This helps to ensure that we're measuring the power of the harmonic with minimal contribution from the surrounding noise. And although it may not be obvious looking at the figure shown here, the width of each harmonic is scaled or multiplied by the harmonic order, so the resolution bandwidth may also need to be increased as harmonic order increases. And finally, the measurement time at each frequency is typically also user-definable, 
with longer measurement times producing more accurate measurement results. In many modern spectrum analyzers, all of these functions are integrated into an automated measurement routine, where the user simply provides a few configuration values, and the analyzer measures and reports the results automatically. Harmonic distortion measurement results are provided in two ways. The first is the amplitude of the individual harmonics, as discussed on the previous slide. These are reported as powers relative to the fundamental, so the units are typically dBc, or decibels down from the fundamental carrier. In this example, the amplitude of the fundamental is measured as an absolute power in dBm, but the power of each harmonic is reported in dBc relative to this power. This measurement data is often provided in tabular format. The other way that harmonic distortion is quantified is as the combined power in multiple harmonics relative to the power of the fundamental. This is referred to as total harmonic distortion and can be reported either as a percentage or in dB. Let's take a closer look at how total harmonic distortion is calculated. Total harmonic distortion is usually automatically calculated by the measuring spectrum analyzer with the user defining the number of harmonics to include in the measurement. Recall that spectrum analyzers normally report power in units of dB, that is, on a logarithmic scale. To calculate total harmonic distortion, we first need to convert any relative powers in dBc into absolute powers in dBm. Next, these dBm values must be converted into linear units, that is, into watts. A relatively simple equation can then be used to calculate total harmonic distortion in percent. If necessary, another simple equation can be used to convert total harmonic distortion in percent to total harmonic distortion in dB. It should be obvious from this example that, especially in the case of larger numbers of harmonics, having the analyzer perform these calculations saves significant time and helps avoid user error. Before we conclude this presentation, let's spend a few moments talking about a special variant of total harmonic distortion. Recall that total harmonic distortion only takes into consideration the distortion caused by harmonics. In some applications, particularly in audio applications, the effect of noise is also very important. And in these cases, a measurement of total harmonic distortion plus noise is often desirable. In this case, Power is measured over a bandwidth, as opposed to only at each discrete harmonic. Like total harmonic distortion, total harmonic distortion plus noise is also reported in percent, or in dB. Prior to the development of modern spectrum analyzers, total harmonic distortion plus noise was actually an easier measurement to make. A filter was used to notch out the fundamental, and then measurements were made over the bandwidth of interest. That said, total harmonic distortion plus noise measurements are less common in RF compared to audio applications. And one final note, total harmonic distortion plus noise is essentially the inverse of SINAD, another common measurement of noise and distortion. Please see the separate presentation, Understanding SINAD, if you'd like to learn more about SINAD and how SINAD is measured. Let's end with a brief summary. Harmonics, which are copies of the signal appearing at multiples of the original or fundamental frequency, are generated by nonlinear devices and are extremely common. In almost all cases, the amplitudes of harmonics decreases as the harmonic order increases. And in almost all cases, harmonics are undesirable because they create distortion. Therefore, it's important to be able to measure this harmonic distortion. In RF applications, this is normally done using a spectrum analyzer, with a signal generator sometimes needed to provide the input or stimulus signal to the device under test. Harmonic distortion measurement results are given relative to the amplitude of the fundamental in two different ways. The first is as the amplitudes of each individual harmonic, usually in dBc, or dB down from the fundamental. The second is the distortion caused by a set of user-defined harmonics, and this is called total harmonic distortion, 
reported in percent, or in dB. A common variant of total harmonic distortion is total harmonic distortion plus noise, which, as the name implies, includes the effect of noise. This measurement is more common in audio applications. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Harmonic Distortion Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about different ways of measuring distortion, or about other spectrum analyzer measurement types, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.